Hey, what's up, subscribers? Yeah. I know, oh, what? I know y'all saying. Look at this. Turo, Fierce 8. What is what is he doing? <laughs> what, you running the kickers? Yes, I am running the kickers. Uh, But I'm about to take him out. Why? Because I change it up often, man. It's just what I do. I'm not going to listen up forever. I ran the kickers. I wanted to prove something. But when I ran them, I realized something. I, 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 I ran them because I let a friend of mine talk me into selling to him my full Turo Force 8s. And I really didn't give y'all a really good breakdown on the sound quality and output of those force eights. Yeah, you put that back in there, baby. So what I decided was when I decided, okay, I'm tired of listening to these kickers. Now, nothing's wrong with them. I just changed them up a lot. I said, I'm going to go back to the force eight. So I ordered myself two force eights. And when I did, I said, let me get a fierce eight because I wanted to see the differences between the two. So here is, I already did an unboxing of the Force 8. Y'all already know about y'all already know what it looks like and all the features. Y'all seen the free air test. Y'all also seen it inside the enclosure. And you seen a couple of videos and I had four of them. Uh, then I went over and switched the kicker. So I said, let me let me see. I want to cop one of these Fierce Eights while they are $79. 80 bucks. Now, mind you, and I got this from good source. The prices are going to go up on Toro subs this year. They felt, and which is true, they have done enough to try to get their name known, and that's why they had the price so cheap. Not that the quality of subwoof was cheap, by no means. It's just that, you know, when you first start out, you got to try to get your product out there so everybody find out about you, and that's what they feel they have done. They did that for, what, about a year now. About a year, yeah, at least a year, for a year. Very, pretty much made no money off the product, straight up. When their product was just as a performer as other larger products, uh, just as comparable with any eight you can name out there, particularly the Force Eight. With uh, hey, I have, don't have no experience with this one yet, but we're gonna do a box unboxing here. Uh, with that being said, uh, their prices are gonna go up. So, but when I release this video, they may go all been already went them back up, or you need to go ahead and cop it now. But whatever the price, it is worth it, okay? The Force 8s are comparable to the Sundown X8s, uh, Scar ZVX8, if you want to put that in there, Resilient Sounds Gold 8, uh, Wolfram Audio 8. They are right in the mix, man. I got 2.5-inch voice coil, uh, dual spiders, uh, larger basket. Let's go back and watch the unboxing, I'll tell you, and, and you'll see why I went back to where, I, where I'm changing it up and going back and revisiting the Force Eights. Number one, I like them. Let me be honest with you. Of all the eights I done had, that's my number one eight, the Force Eight. I like them. Not saying no other eights good, but that's what I like. I like, like them a whole lot. Enough to, I've never revisited eight. I'm going back to revisit those. Uh, and then after that, I would say my kickers. And then I would say the X8s. Or no such. And yeah, that's my third. I had my, my choices in. You put them for all the eights I done tested and ran. Now, my number one is the Force 8. Uh. One reason you buy bottom for $119. And then the second reason, when even they go back to full price, they're only gonna be 200 bucks. A lot of these other eights are way up there in comparison to these. But anyway, that's unboxed this Fierce 8. It is 400 watts RMS, 800 watts max power. If it's anything like its bigger brother, this number is underrated. It's not 400 watts, it's probably about 550, 600 watts RMS, and 1200 watts max. Remember, with an 8, all you need is about 500 watts. That's pretty much all you need. After that, everything is to turn heat. Unless you got a 2.5-inch voice coil, then 750 is all you need. All right, it's got a carbon fiber Kevlar wood pup cone. Carbon fiber Kevlar wood wood pup cone. Wood pup Kevlar fibers pressed together to make the cone as rigid as possible. Is it as good as a plastic cone? As far as durability, no. Because plastic will resist moisture. Than the than the uh, wood the, the pressed paper cones, but as far as sound quality, some feel that a uh, pressed paper cone has a better sound quality than a cone that is made of plastic. Well, what do you think, MB? Mm, a 
it could be a slight measure of truth of that. Could be a slight measure of truth of that. I can't prove or disprove that. But to my ear, it might be a slight measure of proof to that. Durability, though, to go to the plastic cone. Long last durability the plastic cone. Okay, moving on. 90 ounce strodium ferrite magnet. Hmm. Strodium ferrite. You ever heard of near the magnets? Strodium magnets? Well, I'm not going to get into the, the technical analysis of it because I have no idea. I'm not going to lie to you. But I do know that when you put that IUM at the end before the magnets, IUM is a suffix on these magnet types. This strodium ferrite magnet doesn't have to be overly large to be very, very powerful to affect and get a magnetic field over the gap that's going to interact with the windings of the, the actual moving part of the subwoofer. So the strodium ferrite magnets generate a strong field. They don't have to be over, they don't have to be very, very large to, to do what a regular ferrite magnet can do. All right. Uh, custom molded rigid dust cap. Mm, man, it's just, it does have a strong dust cap, similar to the force. Uh, they come in dual four. Right now, all Toro Fierce is probably going to be all D4. Sometime this year, they'll probably introduce a D2 with the, in the Fierce series, most likely with the 12S. Uh, coming in this year, the four subs. All the series four subs probably have a D2 and a D4 option. Probably. I'm getting it from a good source, my contact at Toro that I've talked to. All right. So, let's unbox it. Mm. Same box that you get with a force. It just says fierce. Uh, man. Uh, bomb. Manual up top first. This is to protect the center of the cone. This is to protect the surround. Wrapped in plastic. Didn't spend a whole lot of money on unboxing. Keep the cost of the subwoofer down overall. But I think the boxing is sufficient to get the subwoofer to you. Uh, in one piece, uh, honestly. I mean, you got, they got fits in, they got these things here along the side. I mean, it's, unless somebody just takes this box and just throws it down, the incidental dropping uh, is not going to affect it. And plus, when you order one or two, they don't ship it in this box. They put it in another box and put some shipping material inside and send it to you. You get one, two, three, four, they get a, a comparable box. I think they ship them in twos so and put stuff around it. Because uh, when I bought my four, I got one set with two woofers in each. One box with two woofers in each. So it comes in plastic. Mm. It looks very similar to the force. Do I got it? Okay. Make sure you got it. it looks very similar to the force as far as the mounting gasket, the surround, the cone, the stitching. It looks very similar to the force. In fact, if you put them side by side, you probably couldn't tell that one is a force and one is a fierce one. Uh, when my forces get here, I will let you, I will see if there's a difference that you can tell from actually looking at the sub. But just looking at it right now, and then you look at my other video, they look exactly the same. However, when you turn them to the side, that's when you're going to see they have a totally different basket. Uh, they have the same spider, same sewn-in tinsel leads. You see that right there? The same sewn-in tinsel leads into the spider. And for a $79 sub, you would think it only come with one cider. spider. It doesn't. It has dual space spiders like its larger brethren. The Force. The Force has a larger basket. Because it has a larger basket, it has a larger spider landing. And it has two spiders. I think it's very neat that even when they take this to full price at $150, you're still going to get two spiders. Uh, two progressive road spiders linear space. I have found in my testing of eights that that's, that's better than two spiders glued together. That's what I found. I've noticed that every alien subwoofer that has these dual space spiders and these progressive rolls over the years are getting, are getting bigger and bigger uh, tend to perform on the lows very, very well over a eight inch that just has Two spiders glued together. The Sundown X8 and the Sundown SA8 V3. Both have multiple spiders. They're just glued together. The space spiders, to me, mm, them lows resonate. Uh, 
Crossfires, dual space spiders. Uh, who else has dual space spiders? Uh, da, 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 da. Who else? Who else did I use due to dual space spiders? I think the no, he didn't have dual space spiders. He got a single spider. Uh, I know the crossfire. I know the force has dual space spiders. The crossfire C five has dual space spiders. The da, 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 da. oh, the Scar Evil Eight had dual space spiders. It did. It did the Evil Eight, and which I told you I like that overall. Of all their eights. Okay, for a seventy-nine dollar sub right now, even when it's gonna be one hundred and fifty dollars, you get ten gauge direct leads. So I'm saying it's kind of might be overkill. What's overkill when you're dealing with quality? How is it overkill? It's, it's actually a bonus they give you direct leads because some people feel that those terminals actually give you a little resistance. They do. But I'm be honest with you, it's neg it's negligible at best. But here we taking it out all together, all the way. There's no, there's no terminals. We go straight from the amp to here, you know, solder together, and, and it, there's no resistance. There's <laughs> gonna be very very little resistance with solder it in than a terminal in. But hey, it's it's all on what you think. That's very negligible at best. Okay, the top now, this magnet and boot, I don't know if they're trying to hide what they actually did, but they the boot on the force and the fears both are man, it, it they're tight, like they don't want you to take it off. <laughs> the top plate is uh, I'm just real tight. The top plate is there we go. The top plate is of the top plate is not overly tall. At all, oh, man, they really hiding this thing. It's got a better, big. It's got a nice bottom plate, but the top plate, you really, man, you can get this magnet boot off. You can probably see something. Yeah, they maybe don't. Want, okay, the top plate looks to be about five to seven millimeters. So one slug. Uh, let's see if we can get this off so y'all can see it. Man, I, see, uh, do y'all see how hard I'm trying to get this magnetic boot off? And then I got to put the joker back on. Mm, let's try this. Uh, yeah, here we go. Come on up off there. Take the pants off. Uh, you know what? Ooh, must be top secret. Okay. There we go. Now, remember I told you, don't look the size of the subwoofer. It doesn't mean anything. All you need, the more the, the, the magnet to do is move the soft parts. This has a two inch voice coil. So for $79 now and $150 later, you get a two inch voice coil. The Force has a two and a half inch voice coil. More SPL gear. So this might be more sonically accurate over two and a half inch voice coil of other subwoofers. Not so much the Force because the Force, mind you, has a bigger basket. Then the traditional eight. So this spider is bigger as well. This spider is bigger. Uh, vented pole piece. Uh, vents around the pole piece. Uh, nice top. The top plate and the bottom plate, uh, to me, look like it's the same. You know, some cells have a larger top plate. The focus of energy. Well, here, the top plate and the bottom plate looks the same. It, does, it doesn't have one slug. It has dual slugs. They look to be about... Three quarters of an inch high. Yeah, about three quarters of an inch high. Remember, the magnet size has very little to do with power handling other than helping dissipate the heat. All we need the magnet for is the strength directing a magnetic field over the gap, the winding. Uh, nice, I like the former. Uh, the, 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 uh, I think the, I mean layers is the voice core. The voice coil is a four layer, yeah, four layer, two inch uh, voice coil that is 50.8 millimeters high. That's a nice one. So if you subtract the height above the gap from the top plate, then you're going to get your X max. The X max on, on this one is 18 millimeters, both ways. That's the linear X max. So we're looking at, no, my bad, 20, 20 X-Max both ways. 
I used to, oh man, I ain't got it. It can't throw. Uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't look at just that parameter to tell you what it can do. Do not look at just one parameter to tell you what it can do. We got 20 meters of X max. Is it both ways? It doesn't say. I don't know if it's both ways in one way or not. I know when I listen to that force, you would think them 24 meters is 24 millimeters one way. So I'm going to assume that this is 20 millimeters one way. Okay. For the eight, now check this out. The sensitivity for this eight is 84. 84 dBs with one watt. Two inch voice coil. Very efficient at taking signal and turning to noise. Very efficient at taking signal. Look at this, y'all. Very efficient at taking signal and turning into noise. Very efficient. 84? Boy, that's nice. That's real nice. It says it needs a 1.1 cube box. Hmm. I'm going to put my program on to see if that's what it needs. That might be what it called for. I know they weren't too far off. With, well, with my four that I put inside my truck, I had them playing at .75, and you've seen what was happening. Points they was all sharing. In fact, they weren't even sharing that. They were playing. They were sharing. They were playing at point six. When I run these next two, I'm gonna put them in one point two five each. So it's gonna be a two point five cube box. I really finna see the full performance of them. You know, I'm finna put them in a larger box. I was happy when it was playing at point six. So even though it says one point one, we know we can operate all the way down to point five and up. Okay, that's probably the maximum volume they want you to put it in. But we're going to see. Uh, do y'all know the look of the subwoofer? Mm, yeah. I like the build quality of it. It's a very robust, very robust uh, built subwoofer. Uh, love it. Love it. Very cool. Love it. Uh, 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 so, uh, I put this back on and we're going to go from there. Okay? So, that is the unboxing of the Fierce Toro 8. You need a cobble, but they go up in price. Pull the trigger, y'all. Pull the trigger before they go up in price. But if they do go up in price to $150, I'm telling you, it's going to be well worth it. A sensitivity rating of 84 on an 8. The only, sub the only subwoofer that has that it, that has a high rating like that is that Kick L7. You know, as you go up in corner there, you go up in sen the sensitivity going up. So that's why the kicker uh, sensitivity, you watch the video, the kickers is 83. This is 84. But it doesn't have the same large as a cone. So what does that mean? I mean these soft parts are very, very sensitive to taking very sensitive to taking signal and turning into noise. Mm. Might not move as much air as the kickers, but it's very sensitive on one watt. Where you rather have a subwoofer that throws long or one that hits hard. Mm. Anyway, we're gonna see what it do. The unboxing. All right, then. Peace.